thank you very much for turning back in. My name is Fonny. In my channel, I talk about my houseplant and my Hoyas. Today, it is another episode of Hoya Bloom series. This is a pretty special Hoya to me because I had it for a relatively long time and it is also one of the very first Hoya that I have purchased last year, around in March, April time. A little bit of hint, this Hoya has rounded small leaf. It is Hoya Mathilde. Before I dig into the Hoya Bloom series um, chapters, um, I want to give you a little bit of background of Hoya Mathilde. Hoya Mathilde is a very, very prolific grower. If you have followed me uh, from before, I have featured Hoya Mathilde in my previous series talking about one of the harder Hoya to keep. It is the 10th uh, ranked uh, of the hardest Hoya to keep. It was because Hoya Mathilde won't be very happy if you over uh, water it. However, after I have made that video and also I have transferred it to a self-watering pot, it never really have a problem in watering anymore because it just suck up enough water it needs. It has water roots that grow into the water reservoir. So then that problem has solved itself. So I could report uh, in this video, Hoya Mathilde is actually quite easy to keep. However, it is not an easy Hoya to bloom for me. Start off with the first part. How long does it take for Hoya Mithil to flower the first time since I obtained it. I obtained it in April last year in 2021 and it only flowered this year in July, June time, which means that it took over a year to flower, even though it has gone through a summer and spring growth season last year. So I would say it is not that easy for me uh, under my condition to have it flower the first time. I heard and I also discussed with other people who have flowered Hoya Mathilde before. They say that Hoya Mathilde kind of need to be relatively um, mature in order to flower. So let's move on to the second part of the peduncle formation period. So the first time when I saw the first peduncle formed, it is actually back in February this year. So it doesn't really take too long to form Hoya peduncle. However, for Hoya Matilda, the peduncle is very difficult, in my opinion, to grow from a small dot to a mature peduncle that actually flower. For example, this one. This peduncle has been there for more than half a year. It pushed out um, very quickly, but it stopped growing. And similar to this one over here, um, just to explain the growth process is it start growing out from the same node uh, on the tendril that will also have new leaf grown. Um, these two new leaf, as you can see here, just recently grown, but this peduncle has been there for more than, I think, four months, uh, which is before the winter. So I have so many Hoya Matilde buds, or I would say peduncle, tiny peduncle that formed ever since February, as you can see in this video. However, it never really continued growing after it formed maybe like this size, maybe five millimeter in the tip of the peduncle, and then it stopped growing. It just became a dormant um, peduncle. Not until May this year, uh, around two months before, I start seeing the peduncle grow a little bit more, which means that the peduncle has a little bit more rounded buds that formed on the tip. And I was like, okay, maybe it is my luck this time. I actually anticipate um, the reason why. Uh, it could be useful for you, but maybe it's just under my condition. But uh, I also want to share with you on this tip. It is when Mathilde has uh, a lot of sunlight, it will push out a lot of new growth. And at the same time, peduncle will form in uh, optimal 
sunlight condition. However, in order for the peduncle to continue growing, first, it needs to be relatively mature uh, as a plant. But I think an even more important factor is the humidity level. Between February to May, it always has been quite dry in the air. I would say between 25% to 40 maximum percent. Most of the time is like 19 even, 19 to 30%. That's the time between February and May. However, in May, it has a lot more rain uh, because it's spring and summer season. Because of that, my room humidity has become between all the time, I would say, 50 to 60% of humidity, constant um, high humidity for two weeks. And ever since that happened, the bud formed larger and larger by day. It's just really fascinating for me to kind of observe this could be the potential reason. For the first week, as you can see in this video, it started in May. It's it formed a small bud, just like any peduncle that I have seen. However, uh, week by week, it has grown a little bit more, a little bit more. Um, and then on the second week, you can see um, the bud grows obviously larger. I would say double the size of the first week. And then the third week you see here. And at the same time, you can see that there is a bunch of other peduncle forming um, around um, the Hoya Matilde. Um, namely, it would be uh, Hoya SPAFF Petoniae, uh, Lacunosa, Croniana, and also my Super Eskimo, um, Croniana Super Eskimo. So I, as I said, I believe it is because of the humidity level has been significantly increased in the past uh, month even. Um, so in the final weeks, you can see here, the bud is very different uh, from of the Hoya flower that I have seen because the bud itself almost looks like a star shape. It's not just like a star shape in the, from the back, but also the shape of the corolla uh, also looks like a star. Um, I can show you a reference what star I meant, like the paper star that you fold by yourself. And then it grows uh, not like Lecunosa, because for Lecunosa it grows like this, like a spider shape. It will just slowly expand itself. But I think for Hoya Matilde, because the flower is quite large, it doesn't really have the really obvious spider uh, expansion, like uh, in the pedicel. But rather it kind of... Uh, droop a little bit uh, because of the flower bud is quite heavy. So then the uh, pedicel uh, it drooped vertically um, and then it just have a slight uh, expansion uh, on the uh, pedicel. It took around, I would say, a month and a half. It takes time. It takes time for the bud to grow from a tiny, teeny dot until what you see now, a very mature star shape like uh, bud, which is at any moment it will open up. So yeah, I would say it's, it's around a month and a half to almost two months to see the uh, opening uh, of Hoya Matilde flower. So we move on to the flower shape. Here you see the close up of the flower. It is much larger than the regular um, Hoyas that I have. Regular, I mean small leaf Hoya. Just for comparison, I have the Lacunosa over here. And just looking at the size difference, it's pretty significant, I would say. It's almost like four times the size of a um, Lacunosa flower. But if you compare Lacunosa leaves with the leaf of Matilde, it is actually quite similar. In other words, it really got the characteristic of the flower size of the parent of Matilde. And if you look into this coloration, it is not pure white. It almost like a hint of green. And also it has 
very, um, I would say very complex corona. You see that the corolla is fuzzy, very, very light green. And also it has this star shape. Just to have a closer look at this one. It's just speechless when it comes to how pretty it is. And it is very generous as well. As you can see, I have quite a number of very mature flower coming up. So, oh, I didn't know. Here, this one just opened, I believe, probably just now, because you see that the shape of the flower, it's very much like curled inwards, which means that potentially it just opened up. Probably this one later today or maybe tomorrow early morning. It's just filled with trails of metal flower. Let's move on to the flower scent. I'm really curious about this part because a lot of people say that Mathilde has really beautiful flowers, but then comparatively it has a pretty terrible scent. So I'm going to see how I felt about the Mathilde flower scent. So let's uh, have a deep sniff. I would say it does have a floral scent, but it's more like a um, sour type of floral scent. And it doesn't really smell as floral and sweet um, like Coroniana or Lacunosa, and let alone um, caramel smell. It's uh, completely not uh, relevant to the caramel smell. I think it smells all right, but it does give me kind of like a Chinese medicine uh, scent. So it's, uh, it's a special one. It smells like Chinese medicine, that kind of Chinese herbs um, that you have creams that you put on your skin and there's any problem. So interesting, <laughs> flower scent. The last part, the peduncle nature. The peduncle nature, I believe it is rebudable. I have not uh, rebud uh, the same peduncle for Hoya Mathilde. However, I have seen uh, the existing peduncle constantly trying to rebud on the same peduncle because as I mentioned, uh, it tried super hard, but then, I mean, it stopped forming peduncle ever since February this year, but in the same, on the same tip, it tried to push out a little bit, a little bit uh, each time, but it's just failed. So then each time it uh, pushed out flower, flower bud on the same um, peduncle. So, I assume and I believe that Hoya Mathilde is a rebuddable uh, peduncle. So yeah, it's a really good thing to know the peduncle is rebuddable. Just a little bit of highlight, the care tip that I provide for Hoya Mathilde. I put it in my living room, which means that it is a room environment. It is right next to my south facing window, so then it has direct sunlight, I would say between 8 a.m. all the way until 12 uh, and uh, noon uh, during spring and summertime. Uh, it has no problem receiving direct sunlight uh, because you can see that the leaf is pretty thick. It's not a problem for it to receive a high light condition. Uh, in fact, more light means higher growth rate and also the probability of peduncle forming is much higher as well. Uh, so, and the watering, uh, as I mentioned, I put it in a self-watering pot. Um, all of my Hoyas I put in Lechuza Pond. I water it every seven days. It dry out quite fast. It is because it is a really large plant and it's relatively small of the pot size. That's the reason why I need to water it a little bit more. Uh, but uh, a tip that I can give and also from my experience is it is easy for you to control the watering if it is a relatively smaller pot. I'm not saying that um, you should keep your Hoya root bound. I really don't think it is that important to be root bound. It is just easier for you to control the watering if it is a relatively smaller size, but not like super small uh, size. So yeah, um, the humidity, I would say it doesn't really matter because the leaf is really thick. Um, 
most of the time in winter time it's between like 19 to 30 percent of humidity in my living room so yeah there you go my care tips of Hue Matilde and as I said humidity I believe is the key uh, for the um, Matilde peduncle to successfully form for a small one all the way to the flowerable bud all right, this is everything I know about Hoya Matil flower and also a little bit of care tip that you may find helpful. If you have any questions or suggestion uh, you have for me for Hoya Matil, please leave your comment down below. If you like this type of content and you want me to continue producing Hoya Bloom series, um, so then I know uh, this is something that my uh, viewers would be interested in, please be generous enough to hit the like button and you can also share the video with your friends. Until next time, I wish everyone is having a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!